Surviving winter, I think, is one of the hardest questions a beekeeper has to solve. It's what separates the bee havers from the beekeepers and eventually causes most people to quit by their third year. Not seeing much action on this one. So let's see how they're doing. Uh oh. Oh. Nobody likes to see this. Well. But that's exactly what Casey and I are trying to fix. And maybe kept them alive. But then in the spring, they just would have... And then maybe lose all three of yeah, them. Yeah. Like, they could have strengthened them, and then you have two hives make it, and one only one that collapsed. I think it's just bad for us to try to tell the bees what they should do, instead of just letting the bees do what they want to do. Yeah. The very first skill a beekeeper has to learn is how to stay calm. And trust me when I say I've made a lot of mistakes in trying to figure that out. Timing is a huge part of beekeeping. You can try to push your bees beyond their natural timing and growth, but usually that comes at a cost. So over the last three days, I have been hard at work cutting wood and building five frame nukes, but not just regular five frame nukes, double story five frame nukes. Now you're probably wondering, why did I do this? I stumbled upon a lecture by Mike Palmer and Adrian Queenie. And I was so inspired by both. And I made all of these. There are 19 of them here. I am gonna put the double stacks on them later, but today I'm gonna fill up all of these nukes with bees so that they are ready for queens. It was August 16th when I decided to do all this. And considering that in Michigan, after mid-July, the bees start making their winter bees and there isn't much of a flow for them to build up on. I mean, there is the fall flow, but that's never promised. This is truly when I started to learn the importance of patience because in all honesty, I lost 50% of my bees that year. They weren't able to build up their stores in time and their clusters were really small. So they either absconded in the fall or they ended up dying because of not enough food or not enough bees to help keep them warm by mid-January. Do you think this one died of starvation or moisture? Because I don't see any bees with their butts in the cell and there's some uncapped honey right there. But they all appear to be a little wet. I think this one died of moisture. Now, had I have stayed calm and waited till the following year to try out this nuke experiment, then I probably would have had more hives coming out of winter, but I don't regret anything that I did last year. So this is the hive that I did not put any sugar on whatsoever. Um, I just gave them these two boxes and just let them make do. And look at this, so much food still in here. And I don't know if they're bringing food in or if this is leftover from last year, but all of these frames are so heavy because they're so full of honey. I may have made more mistakes than the amount of things that I did right. But as my third year of being a beekeeper, I learned more about how the bees work than I would have if everything went according to plan. Okay, so I think this is probably the hardest part of beekeeping, really trying to harness one's ability to fail and just keep on chugging away. <laughs> and this kind of ties in with truly coming to peace with the fact that we are not the ones who are in control of our hives, that actually the girls are. And because of that, we could do everything right according to the book and we could still have hives collapse. Now, that kind of sounds depressing, but each and every one of us are like scientists in our bee yard. We are a part of a community for the greater good of beekeeping. 
Right now, there are a lot of problems and challenges that still need to be solved in order to help push forward our modern day beekeeping. We are in a very important time in beekeeping right now, where there are so many amazing findings that are coming to light, especially around varroa mites. Like, we live in a time today that being treatment free is actually a thing, whereas 10 years ago, saying that you were treatment free would have just resulted in an entire room of people just laughing at you. But the only reason we are where we are today is because a few people decided they would be the brave ones to just keep on trying no matter how many times they failed. I don't know why so many of us are so afraid and take failure as if it was a representation of ourselves. But if I have learned anything in my 26 years, it is that every single time you fail, you learn something. And that something is something <laughs> that you would have never learned unless you even failed to begin with. So at this point, our bees truly need us just keep pushing forward no matter how much it takes. Okay. Now, this next one never really was a thing until technology came into play, where right now you can go on social media or hop on YouTube and see hundreds of people and what their hives look like right now, which is great and all until you go into your hive this time of year and see, oh no, why is my cluster so small? What did I do wrong? How do I fix this? Because I don't want to lose my bees, but everyone on YouTube and social media is telling me that if my cluster size isn't big enough that they're not going to be able to make it, how do I know what size they need to be? They certainly don't look like Billy or Joe's hives that I see on YouTube. <laughs> and then that causes us to ditch our original plan and throw anything at our hives just to see if it sticks. But the bees don't react that way. And most of the time, we aren't seeing the full picture with some of the hives that we do see on social media. Bees are very location dependent. So how someone's bees look in Tennessee is most certainly not how someone else's bees are going to look in Michigan this time of year. Just like life, we are all on our own unique journey with our beekeeping. This is why we say ask five beekeepers a question and you're gonna get five different responses. And this is exactly what makes beekeeping so fun and exciting. So let your bees teach you and stay on your own path as you discover the beekeeper that you are becoming. Oh, there's my queen. Oh wow, she's really small. I don't even know if you can see her. She is teeny tiny. So winter is coming. And winter is coming. And it's coming in pretty quick. So I wanted to put together this video as a reminder that no matter what happens this winter, it is our duty as a part of the beekeeping community to keep pushing forward. Time after time, I am shown that beekeeping isn't just beekeeping anymore. It is a life teacher that challenges us and helps us grow as individuals because that is why we're here, right? To become the best version of ourselves that we can be so that we can give back to the world and create a time that we would be proud to be living in. Beekeeping can be a pretty challenging hobby as it has truly made me change the status quo that I've had in my mind since I was a kid and has pushed me to be better. So friends, no matter if we lose all of our hives this year or all of our hives survive, let's make this commitment together that no matter what, when spring rolls around, each and every one of us are still gonna be suiting up for another season. Right now, there is a missing generation of beekeepers. So it is up to us to continue to keep pushing beekeeping forward and to share it with each other. So if you're ready to make this commitment with me, comment a bee emoji in the comments and welcome to the family. Um, so that's pretty much it from me today. Just a couple quick announcements. On November 20th, new prices for 2024 spring nukes are going to be going up. And on December 1st, the merch line, BeFit merch line, is finally going to be dropping. I am so excited for it. I have been working very hard on it. Um, so yeah, don't want to miss that. Make sure you say the date in your calendars. But that's it for me today. I hope you have an amazing week. And thank you so much to each and every one of you that have been here through this entire journey. 
it really, truly, truly just means the absolute most to me in my heart. So anyways, I will see you guys soon and don't quit and be fit.